because they uh, may be in the booth. But let's get to the action. Quick transition game. Michael with the ball on the three bar. We want to check the audio. I don't know if they can. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, I can't hear you. Carlos? Hello, guys. Looks like we're getting some... Looks like we're getting Brandon and Carlos maybe joining the commentary. And if and I may, I may back out to give them the opportunity to do the commentary. Yeah. Right. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they're going to be joining me. Hello. Hello, guys. Hey, Mark. How are you? Hey, man. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, I'm excited. I'm watching the game of the Simbolinga here, the companion of Costa Rica, Gustavo Siles, against Michael Stone. Ahorita va ganando Michael Stone, 2 a 0. Y Gustavo Siles tiene la bola de... Va a ser su rollover. Oh, excelente rollover. Hola, Mike. Hi, Mike. Hey, uh, what's up, man? Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Hey, congra <laughs> congratulations. I picked, Blake, I picked Blake to beat you. But as soon as you started really? winning, I picked you. I changed my mind in the beginning of the match and decided you were going to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, the uh, random play is really, really good. Okay, guys, we're happy to, to be here with you know, all you. And me and Carlos were, was thinking about stay here and share a little bit Spanish from Spanish people from yeah. Peru, Argentina, Mexico. Because, you know, uh, everybody is, is watching inside foods, right? Yeah. I'll tell you all what, right. why don't you guys go ahead and uh, I'm excited. He's your compatriot. He's from your country. You know him well. Why don't you guys go ahead and take over and let's do this. Uh, let's hear this one entirely in Spanish. Sure, sure. All right. Ahorita mismo tiene la bola Michael the Stone, Pato Zuno, y Gustavo Siles va a defender el gol. Michael the Stone tiene un timeout. I'm talking about talking about Gustavo Siles. He's, he's a really, really good player from Costa Rica. He's the top five player of Costa Rica. Very good And well I'm I'm very very happy to to look another Costa Rican in a pro single final. <laughs> yeah right now in, in this week oh Which, uh, excelente goal de Gustavo from from the defense from the two bar. When you were playing last night, Brandon, when you were playing last night, Terry Roos said this. He said, look, here's the thing with the Costa Ricans. On ball one, <laughs> on ball one, yeah. they play like they're down. They play like it's championship block point on ball one. So if you don't play like it's championship on ball one, they're going to get ahead of you. So you have to attack them the way they're attacking you. And you see the same thing in Gustavo right now. He's starting to fight. He's not, he's not building up to it. He wants to fight immediately on the first possession. Exactly. He's a very different style. Um, he's very, he tried to, to to always like keep focus and keep five bar. He's not like me, like shots by shots from five bar or, uh, or like, I don't know, random shots, you know? It's, it's, it's very different. I don't know, what do you think about the Costa Rican football players? Nice goal from Mike Pistol. Mike. Yeah, I think I think you're all different. I think you and Kevin are very different. I think Kevin has a more um, he, he's a less he, he doesn't emote as much as you do. I think you're way more emotional, which works for you. I yeah. think you take more risks and I think it helps you in the transition game. Uh, but yeah. would you all you guys are all emotional, which is great. Even Kevin's emotional. I think you're uh, on the far side of it and it works for you. Uh, I think your, your transition game. I think you intimidate your competitors because of your hand speed and your energy. I mean, you can exactly. see it in the pull kick, the five bar shots. I mean, the pull kick, the wrist pull kick from the two bar and the open hand yeah. pull kick from the three bar. Um, you guys are all a little different, but you guys are all still a little bit the same. And uh, and I love like I love like Gustavo here is still a very emotionally connected to the match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are very excited, excited players. Yeah. Nice shot from Michael. Well, Michael Saul is a really good player too. He's one of the future of the football weekend, young people, right? He play really, really, really good. He put in losers. Okay. 
Juan, ya que la... Ya, no está ya. tiene la bola adelante. Yeah. Yeah. He's very impressive. Gustavo is very impressive. On the yes. one hand, he's ranked expert because he's not doesn't play a lot of IFP tournaments. He has oh, a skill level. He has a skill yeah. level of a pro. Clearly, yeah. the skill level of a pro. Yeah, yo, exactly. I think so. You see, he's smart. He's using his uh, timeouts too. Um, he fights a lot too. He's, he's very excited and with energy, like you said. Michael, Michael's been around for a long time. He's I say he's on the bubble where he's trying yeah. to get where you are, trying to get his breakout in the exactly. open division. Yeah. 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 Who does Gustavo play with in doubles in Costa Rica? Um, the name is Carlos Loaiza. Carlos Loaiza. The name is Tom Villa. Oh. He's a good player. He's another uh, another uh, top player in Costa Rica. Un saludo ahí para todos los amigos de Costa Rica que nos están viendo por Inside Football. Para todos los amigos de Costa Rica, saludos y que la pasen bien. Eh, eh, está ganando el primer juego, lo está ganando Michael Stoll. Michael Stoll esta semana, ahora no ha estado jugando excelente. Yo lo he estado siguiendo y a mí me, me ganó, me pasó a perdedores en el, en, el, en el primer set que jugamos. Y ha estado jugando muy bien. Ahorita él está entrenando muchísimo y está muy motivado. Me acuerdo cuando Michael Stone empezó, era un niño que llegaba a Maryland. El papá lo llevaba, el papá lo llevaba a Maryland a jugar. Y él se me acercaba para que yo le enseñara cositas. Era un un niño ¿Cuántos años? chiquito, yo creo que podía tener unos 11, 12 años, tal vez podía tener Michael y siempre llegaba y me decía, me preguntaba cosas y ahora tiene un nivel excelente, de hecho creo que es uno de los próximos pro, eh, pro master en, tal vez en uno o dos años. Claro, por supuesto, con, con respecto a bueno, Michael Stone, como decía Mark, eh, es, eh, un jugador top con todas las habilidades, puede hacer cualquier truco desde la barra de dos, desde el five board, desde su rollover, pull shot, sling shot, tiene muchas, muchas características, nada más que él estaba como, como en una burbuja, como dijo Mark, sí. está tratando fuerte en, en llegar al, 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 al alto nivel, y eso es un gran paso, en una final de un pro, eh, pro singles, yo, yo que jugué varios, varios finales de Pro Singles y es un nivel bastante, bastante, bastante fuerte. Sí, es el, un paso, un paso al Pro Master. Es un paso bastante grande. E igual para Gustavo sí, de estar en la final del Pro Singles, wow, es sí, mucho orgullo, es mucho orgullo libro, para, para ambos, para ambos. Es un expert en, en, en Estados Unidos, para el nivel de Estados Unidos. Claro. Uh -huh. well, for, for the people from the U.S., we, we think, we think uh, Michael Stoll is a ground level right now. Ground level. He is the next pro master in one or two years uh, ago. I'm sorry, ahead. Hey, you guys have a big tournament coming up. I want it to go. I don't think I'll be able to. But are you excited? You guys are looking forward to having this big event in, in early March, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a uh, month from from March 3 to 6. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really big tournament. There's going to be a uh, Tony Spriedman, Blake Robertson, Tal Alfredo, mm -hmm. and a lot of great. great players. So it's really, really good for Latin American people. Uh, I would like to invite uh, our friends from Peru, from Chile, from Argentina, Mexico because it's going to be the, the biggest the biggest tournament in Latin, in Latin America. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 
You're welcome to if you want to come. Oh, man. Just... I wanted to. I wanted to. There's too much happening for me, but I'm going to watch it. I hope to watch it. Yeah, you yeah, know? sure. Maybe we can help. We can talk. We can talk after the match about helping streaming on Inside Foods. We can discuss that after. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'll teach you. Yes. I'm talking a little bit in Spanish. <laughs> Quisiera uh, saludar a todos los amigos de Perú, Chile, Argentina, uh, Uruguay, um, México, wow. México también. Ellos nos siguen, nos siguen bastante, siempre están apoyándome. Eh, y bueno, aquí tenemos a otro latinoamericano en una final Pro Singles, que es, como decía anteriormente, bastante orgullo para mí eh, tener a otro compatriota en, en, en una final como esta es de alto nivel. So Michael Stoll here with the two to the five. I haven't been watching him play much all weekend. Is that how he got here? Two to the five passing? You guys watch him play? Uh, to Michael Stoll? Yeah. Uh, I didn't because I, I was a little bit focused on my own. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. He's, he's lucky he did a couple of two to five passes. The first few got blocked, but he kept getting yeah. the ball back. Yes. And that style, um, the, the, the passing from two bar to the five and then five to the three, it's really, really hard for for, for Costa Rican because if you see uh, Gustavo Silas, he's going to shoot from behind. This is yeah. our style. You see? Yeah. So, and um, if you, or for example, if Michael Stoll have a better control in the in the, all the row bars, he he's gonna be better, the the counter in, in all the match. More more than than Tavasil is right now. For me, that's that's what's going on in this moment. Yeah. Wow. Let's see. It's it's very. You see, it, this this five they five are in South Australia. It's, it's like it's low. It's really smart. Good shot. Well, the danger with two to the five, we saw it last night when you were playing Blake. Yeah. It's the same thing here. Your hand. If you if you're not highly efficient with two to the five. You made Blake pay multiple times. Turnovers, you picked it up, you scored them on him, or he wasn't fast enough on the transition game. When he didn't catch it on the five, it went back to your goalie area, and then you outplayed him on the two bar. So if you're do, yeah, we watched the whole thing, man. If you're going to go two to the five, you better have a good one against someone who has fast hands. Because if you don't have fast hands, if the other person has fast hands and you don't execute, they'll make you pay the way you made Blake pay last night. It's not, yeah. I agree. Oh, right now. Oh, nice. You see, it, it, it is exactly that's that we were talking about. Michael Stoll is he's using a really nice transition from two bar to the three or two bar to the five bar. Yeah, I think Michael Stahl is winning on every rod right now. I don't think he's losing on any rods. As long as he doesn't turn the ball over two to the five, just like that's great, right? Oh, he's passing really well. He's not scoring a high percent. There you go. You get a break. Sorry, bro. Here's a very nice five bar. Yeah, it's smart.
I think from pro level to to high, it's very important that transition because if you bring or miss a lot of balls or give the ball from the two to the three bar, trying to shoot always that with a master player or pro or pro player, it's so dangerous. Yeah. That's just one of the things that, that I had to change in, in, my, in my football. <laughs> Tightening up a little bit. Yeah. Hey, Carlos. Carlos is not here. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> That's the reason Where? because you didn't hear. <laughs> Where, where's Kevin, man? How come Kevin's not here? I know, and he's working, something like that. He said he, he couldn't come. But I have a notice for all of you. I'm going to play with Kevin on our worlds. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, we are very excited for that. And That's awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, you see a really good combination. Well, our last tournament was in Vegas in 2018. Yeah. Uh, we won we won pro doubles. That was a very, very excited match in that moment. Who, do you guys decide who's going to start off in forward and goalie? Well, um, we played before with Kevin in the goalie and me in the yeah. forward. So yeah. I think that's, that's going to be the lineup. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. You guys yeah. can switch any time. Exactly, exactly. That's, yeah. that's one of the, of the things that we have many skills. Uh, so I can block too. Uh, my blocking part is getting better in this moment. Um, and Kevin, absolutely, yes, he can play forward too. So let me tell you what: if either of you guys ever decide to pass from the two bar, it'll stun everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like one pass. Okay, guys, uh, I, I I have to say goodbye because I'm up in the table number eight against Ryan. All right, man. All right. All right. Yes. Good uh, luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, un saludo para todos los hispanos. Yeah. Los quiero bastante, de los estamos viendo. Y pues los esperamos en Costa Rica en marzo del 3 al 6. Cualquier información con Carlos o me escriben a, a mi Facebook. Muchas gracias, Mark. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Hasta luego. Bye. Yep. Well, that was fun. We got Carlos and Brandon in here. You got another exclusive. Brandon and Kevin Romero are going to play together in open doubles at the World Championships, which is going to be uh, entertaining. I was joking, but I'm not sure if the joke was picked up. If they ever decide to pass, it'll shock everybody because you're just expecting a dead bar pull kick or any number of pull shots or reverses or slingshots. You're not expecting the pass. So those guys decide to try to clear the ball with a, a lob over the center. Uh, it'll probably work every time. This match is uh, really, it's a great match so far. We got Gustavo with the 3-2 lead. And Michael won the first game. We were talking about 2-5. to the five. It's, it's a high percentage play. It works really, really well. But when you're playing someone with fast hands, you better execute because it just turns into a transition nightmare. Switch into the pull shot. And I like this too. Switch it up a little bit. He's got blocked a few times on the on the uh, rollover. And he's got that he can lean on. And now look, 3-3. Three, three. So he's not stuck in dead space, turning his spinning his wheels with his roller, getting frustrated. He switched it up and scored. It's awesome. Let's see if Gustavo, Gustavo can fire back. And the deep push side. To make it four three.
nice middle there. Michael, championship point for Michael. Calls a timeout. I like it. So he felt the heat on his three bar. He got blocked more times than he was comfortable with on his roller. Goes to his pull shot. He's two for two. And he's not paying for it because I don't actually think Gustavo has faster hands than Michael. I think Michael might also be the faster player. So Michael's outplaying him for the most part on, on every rod. And here we are, Gustavo, with a chance to make it to a third game. And that's it. Congratulations to Michael Stahl. Quick defensive pickup on the five bar. And that ended quickly. What an incredible match. Michael Stahl playing to tough defense. Gustavo's, fortunately, his men back there weren't in the right spot to defend that block pass. Congratulations, Michael. So I think we got a little break here, everybody. Until the next match. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.
And we welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Kentucky State Tour Kickoff Foosball Championships. My name is Keith Glenn. I am joined once again in the booth by my good friend and colleague, Brad Lorene. Brad, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me, Keith. Good to see you again. Yeah, glad to be back in the booth here. And we got a good one for you here on table number one. We are in the loser's bracket of open doubles. Uh, looks like on the left of your screen, we're going to have Brandon Munoz, who already took down an open singles title this weekend, and Carlos Espedes Martinez in the back. And then on the right of your screen is going to be the team out of Mississippi, Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley. Now, what place are they uh, going for at this point? Uh, this might be the loser's bracket final. No, I don't think it's out that, uh, that deep. far yet. I well, there's a way we'll to find take a out. look at it. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, promises to be a good one. We just saw uh, Carlos and Brandon eliminate Ryan and Mary Moore. We made a nice little run. That was an outstanding run, a lot of fun between the mother and son. They enjoyed the heck out of it, I think, playing together like that. Of course, they did win the mixed competition they this, did win this open mixed. weekend. And, of course, they were both introduced as uh, new Kentucky State Hall of Famers. Outstanding job for all of the years that they've put together with this, Mary. Yeah, we had a great little uh, Hall of Fame ceremony last night. That was really cool to be a part of to get to be in the room. So this is for third or better. The winner, I forgot about that. The winner will go on to face Jake Barnett and Mario Riganello, who might be the surprise of the Open Doubles event. I would say they are the surprise. Yeah, with uh, Mario's partner bailing on him Friday afternoon and uh, Jake stepping in and playing above his uh, pay grade a little bit, one yes, might say. He actually has done an outstanding job, but the excitement level that you watch Jake oh, yeah. with in the back like that, oh my God, he was so excited to be in in, uh, in the hunt like this. Awesome job. Yeah, no, and obviously Mario playing very well as well. So, and the, obviously then sitting in the king seat waiting for whoever wins their way out of this loser's bracket is the actual one seat of the weekend. That's Tommy Atkinson and King Gabriel. So still a lot of good action for you here on table number one in Lexington, Kentucky. So how would you do this weekend? Uh, considering how the weekend started, I guess I can't complain. I uh, got it together a little bit, but uh, not quite the results that I was hoping for, but can't be too upset about it. How, how about yourself, Brad? Well, I got to play in uh, open doubles finally with somebody that I felt confident that we could get uh, into the top 20, and we succeeded at that with Evan Stachlik. Had a really a lot of fun with him. He's a little um, uh, rusty, but he looked awesome at times. He is. He used to be a pro master for many, many years. Yeah, he was no. a, a top 10 for uh, cons uh, through the 90s. He was uh, in the top 10. Yeah, he's an outstanding guy, too. A lot of fun to be around. Yeah, very fun. I got to meet uh, Mr. Satchik a little bit this weekend. We hung out a little bit Friday night. Very nice guy. Yeah, cool guy. We, we had a lot of fun playing in an open. I didn't get to uh, play in the open, excuse me, in the pro doubles. I uh, didn't have a partner, but uh, maybe next time I'll be able to pick up somebody. Yeah, speaking of pro doubles, that one's getting shaping up to be a good one, too. Sam DeJean, Sullivan, Rue still working their way through the winner's bracket. Yeah, they're over there um, uh, on table seven playing, and I don't see either who they're competing against. Oh, Don Shadelfo and his partner. I don't know who his name is. Sorry. Oh, that was uh, Razel. Oh, good play. Okay, so now that's, now that's who that yes. is. We talked uh, about him earlier. Yeah, I saw D Uncle Don getting deep in the bracket. It was Great to see that. And we didn't, weren't sure his partner was, but I've seen that guy knock the ball around a little this weekend. Oh, and we are underway. They jumped on that one while we were looking away here. So Blake Robertson will have a chance to open scoring here, and he tries to go push side, but Carlos equal to it. He will now look to clear, and he does squeak it through to Brandon's three rod. Brandon tries to strike, but Shannon was waiting for him. There's going to be a lot of opportunities here for three bars. Uh, both of these guys have got five fantastic gun. Oh, that was a great pass. Beautiful pass out. from Coley. So now Robinson again, and that one finds, Just looks like it clipped the wall there. Saw yep. every part of the goal but the back. Blake a little off center. Taps and comes back down the middle, and that makes it one nothing here in favor of Robertson and Coley. Do you see one or the other having a bit of an advantage or not there, Keith? Uh, well, I mean, from a standing, you know, ranking standpoint, uh, there are two pros in doubles, I believe. I think Brandon is still up as Blake goes down the middle again. It's now 2-0. Um, oh, and Brandon answers with the left hook, and we expect to see plenty of that. Yep. Brandon obviously known for his... Uh, 
Coley was not ready for that at all. He was yeah. stacked up on that far side, yeah. and he just was not. He didn't even move. Yeah, Brandon, one of the fastest men in foosball, and he likes to play loose as he blocks Blake's pass there. But Blake able to catch the rebound, blocks him again, and Blake squeaks it through. So this is going to be a good one. And, you know, Carlos obviously I think might be the – as Blake goes push side, make it 3-1. Great shot. Yeah, Carlos being the uh, you know the master goalie back there might he's going to have to do some work with Blake. It's going to tall order, but I think he's going to have to if they want to have a shot. At now Coley's a pro, right? I believe. So. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. And Munoz comes pull side, and we're going to get a defensive switch here as Carlos will get up front. And Brandon going to get in the back. That was a quick switch. It's unusual. I, I, maybe Carlos is not feeling as comfortable back there, and or he wanted to get the five bar block which he did not yes yeah maybe he, you know brandon did defeat blake in the open singles final and he does and get the block, the block there yeah. so good call so far paying off brandon Setting for a bank it looks like huh yeah, bluff and bank and then he goes <laughs> right back down, down, down the middle. middle practically yeah and it is now up. three three just like that oh man that, that was, was beautiful a, yeah no that was about as gorgeous of a shot as you could have asked for and uh, i gotta say it's i i've heard you know our my mentor here, uh, Jim Stevens, talking about how much fun he has watching Brandon, and I'm starting to see why. I haven't gotten to see a ton of him play, but it is fun to watch this young man yeah. go at it as Blake goes push side there. Yeah, he just waited him out. out. Yep. yep, yeah, it was, a, it was an outstanding shot selection on that. He just waited to get him out of the hole there and took it. Yep, now 4-3, so Brandon and Carlos. Again, you look at the switch here. We've got um, uh, Blake in the back. Yeah, on the other side. Yep. Uh, Shannon almost steals that one, but unable, unable to hang on to it. Oh, and Brandon unable to grab that ball, but Blake not interested in doing any kind of shooting out of the back. He's going to call timeout and let Shannon get back there. McCauley's got the, the arms to be able to do it. The dude is built like a brick. Yeah, built like a bulldog. <laughs> He's a good player. Yeah, no. I mean, obviously, you know, we're pretty deep in this event. All these players, very, very good, talented players. It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. You always got to worry about those fast hands of Brandon Munoz on the other side of the table. Oh, and he sends a pass up the table, but it looks like maybe Blake wasn't ready for it. He didn't get a man on it. Now Carlos will have a chance to respond. And oh, Blake stuffs that back stuff. into the goal. Yes. And just like that, game number one goes to Blake and Shannon. Now, Carlos made what I would call is a critical error in regards to first he didn't nudge up against the ball. He was about a quarter of an inch off of it when he actually tried to strike that ball, and it did not come off of his man correctly, and it was right down the middle for a strike, but yet it was easy to hit a home run off of that. That was an outstanding job for the three bar getting it. But uh, Carlos also, he, he when he went after that ball, or excuse me, when he shot the ball and he went after it with his, his uh, back row, he did not have the position for it to be able to stop that, that coming back at him. Yeah, as uh, we see Brandon and Carlos stepping away from the table for a moment, and they're going to have a discussion about how Brandon thinks he, Carlos might be able to better block Blake. But, I mean, Blake is a world champion, World Cup champion, uh, a very elite player, so it's going to be a tall order to shut his three-bar down. Well, Carlos is an outstanding player, period. And right now he's just a little out of sorts with uh, the shooting, I think, uh, that proved it there and as well as obviously getting lit up with that uh, Blake shots it's hard to stay focused on what you need to do very true as game number two set to get underway Munoz will put the ball back into play and Blake gets a piece of that one so now Coley with an offensive opportunity Oh, and Brandon gets oh, the nice. five bars uh, stuff yep. on that one. Oh, here we go. Blake Robertson. Oh, mishandles that lane pass. So now Carlos Espinas Martinez will see if he can and nudges right up against the ball, as mm -hmm. Brad you said. Angles that one up the table, but Brandon unable to reel it in, and again he sends. Coley's shot attempt back his way and he does oh, it again. Oh my lord that is And good. this time he finds Tin to make it 2 nothing now. Yeah. And so that was a pass attempt. That was just like a clear. And, yeah. and uh, he just stroked it. Yeah. Home is our good friend yes. Jim Stevens would say. Angle the pack on goal. And uh, Brad I think that's your cue. 
it is. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be joined by Tony Spreaderman. Yeah. Here, so great to see him here. And oh, Brad is going to. I know you guys are going to miss me. Well, so Brad, here, I appreciate you jumping yeah, in with me. But yeah, there's a precedent to be set here. As that ball is kicked up off the table, yeah. Shannon Coley will put it back into play. So watch this cord right here. <laughs> As the ball is, oh wow, flying around, but Brandon Munoz is able to quickly advance it, and now he's going to have a chance to make this 3 nothing here in the early goings. And he goes push side and does. As we get a timeout called here. Yeah, we're a little awkward up here. Uh, had some technical difficulties, so we had to move some things around. But uh, yeah, Tony, thank you for joining me once again. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't want to be here. I'd rather be down on that table, but uh, yeah, I no, guess this I is the next best that. thing. Yeah, no, it's a good match to watch. and uh, You guys had a nice little deep run, right? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I guess for you, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I would have considered it pretty deep. but uh, Fa yeah. Fairly disappointed. Not only that, just the way that things went down. I had opportunities. and um, But anyway, yeah, this yeah. is uh, this is an interesting matchup. Yeah, it's, for sure. So it's now it's doubles ma matchup. You had a... Uh, Blake and Brandon in singles, so just a different dynamic it brings. So Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we saw Blake and Shannon take a pretty decisive game one, but now 3 nothing in favor of Carlos and Brandon. So, got a little bit of a battle here. Well, well both sides are both momentum players. You know, they, it comes in waves. Blake, he can get hot and, and, you know, wipe you out in a couple seconds, and Brandon's kind of the same way, so it's interesting. And the cool part is that the partner dynamic. Uh, Blake and Shannon are really good friends, and then obviously, like, uh, Carlos and Brandon have, uh, you know, they've been playing forever. That you know, they've known uh, Carlos has known known Brandon since he was six, seven years old. Wow! So, as Robertson goes down the middle there to cut the lead to three to one, Brandon taking his time tries the lane, but Coley able to get a piece of it, and he goes nicely along the wall there. Oh, and Carlos able to keep that one out. Brandon reels it in, tries to go quickly, but can't handle the pass. So now Blake's turn out of the back. The switching factor on the right side of the table here, Blake and Shannon. Um, Shannon's a really good forward. You know, they can they can pull a switch, and he can he can go up there and make a difference. You know, and, and, and big points. So this, I think it's an advantage on the right side of the table. Uh, not that Carlos can't play forward, but he's been mainly a goalie for the past uh, year or two. Um, and he's had some pretty good partners along the way. So you can understand that as Brandon smoothly goes up to the lane. Yeah, we've seen some defensive switches from the team on the left already as Brandon goes push side. It's now 4-1. Speaking of momentum, it all seems to be with the team on the left and Blake with the left hook attempt. Don't see that out of him too often. Yeah, but 4-1 is a perfect time to do it. You know, you can either um, create a little bit of momentum yourself, you know, get... It's one. Of, it's the perfect time to, time to do it. You know, you can create that momentum and hopefully have a comeback. Or even uh, so many, so often you see someone shoot a left hook and then the opponent will come back with another one to try and like one up them. <laughs> you know, but but you know, it's I don't know if it's like a disrespectful thing or whatever it is, but you can you can get under somebody's skin with a left hook and yeah. before you know it, you can work your way back into the match. That's the point. As Blake, wow, tight. Brandon was over there. Oh, and he rolls it to. Was that a Euro kind of shot? Didn't look like he dropped his wrist. I looked away for one second. <laughs> Either way, now 4-2. Munoz now the chance to put away game number two, taking more time than we usually see him. And he comes pole side and puts away game number two, and now tied up at one game apiece. That's one thing. Brandon's pole side is... Uh, lightning it's it's automatic for him and, it, and it's much faster he, he seems to have to think more about the push side um so that that if, I, if i'm on you know if i'm shannon or blake i'm my goal is to not give brandon a pull side whatsoever yeah. you know make him hit make him make him beat you with push sides and tap back down the middles whatever which he can do yeah but that's Next, that last match we saw him uh Two of those goals were him stuffing with the five-bar uh, Coley pass attempts. So yeah, he'll do it from all over the table. We've seen that all weekend. Well, he's just he's just lightning fast, and he's hungry. That's the thing. This is great to see. It's a good experience for Brandon. He's uh, he's always had the physical ability to 
to, uh, to you know to beat anybody, but to string together a bunch of wins, beating masters and and overcoming certain situations. This is this is really good for him. Um, just the, the the past couple years on the on the pro tour, he's, he's it's really um, going to help develop him into a, a top top master. As Brandon able to click that ball. Chance to open screen here in game number three comes pull side and he does. Yeah, you're not kidding about that. That is a uh, passes Robertson goes quickly through the lane. And that time doesn't catch the wall. Ties things up at one apiece. Brandon gets hung up. And Shannon, good defensive effort, but Brandon does collect the rebound. Oh, very pretty little wall pass there from Brandon. Goes push side, lets the rod fly a little bit, calls timeout. That was a great shot. Like that, you know, that was, uh, again, different than what that, that pull side is normally his money. So he's been hitting that. He, like I said, he can hit the push side, but that, he would have scored that one on me for sure. That yeah. was just a good shot. And he's developing. He's getting better and better and better. So, well, yeah. But, but I, I'm okay with him scoring that one. And with the, you know, when you get to this top level, it turns into a percentage game. It's like you're not going to block everything. Those are the shots that you're going, you know, you're going to want to make them hit. Yeah, make yeah. them beat you to that side. Right. See if they can do it the whole match. Yeah, exactly. And it, it boils down to a, a percentage game at that point. Boy, it goes through the high lane there. Oh, beautiful push side. And that's a good call on the right. I'd like to see Blake stay up there and get into a rhythm. It's, you know, when you start making all these switches back and forth, back and forth, Shannon's a good player. Shannon's a great player. You want him to kind of, you know, he and he's definitely the goalie on the, on the team. He's the goalie on the team, and, and I think Blake needs to stay up front and really establish being a forward if he wants to stay in this match. As Brandon uh, strikes that one home and looks like they're going to call their second time out. Yeah. Interesting call there in a 3-2 match to burn their second time out. Carlos hasn't really been much of a factor since I've gotten here. Again, I, I got here a little bit late, but I haven't. he hasn't really touched the ball too much. Brandon's been dominating yeah. um, the past what, game and a half or so. Yeah, he's definitely been playing like a man possessed this weekend. And uh, see if Blake has an answer here as Robertson puts the ball back into play. Quickly through the lane. Carlos was daring him to go pull side. He did, but he found the wall. Oh, Brandon almost able to grab that with his three. The question with Brandon has always been his discipline. You know, he's always just, uh, he's played so fast. So fast all the time, making stupid decisions, you know, going into quick shots. And he's he's been using his timeouts really well. Um not just uh, offensive, defensive, but like t he's been controlling the tempo very well. So that's a, a sign of maturity from him. Um, something I've, I've noticed, he's, he's really uh, he's done well this weekend. Yeah, and he's uh, got the success to pr show for it as Coley able to dig that one out. Shannon Coley. Oh, beautiful pass. Good grab by Blake, too. Yeah. Robertson with a chance to tie it. And he comes pole side and does. And we're going to get another defensive switch. And I don't necessarily like this. I, I, you know, Blake is a superior forward. He's, uh, and of course, yeah. proves me wrong. <laughs> right on cue. Uh, yeah. No, I like, I'd like to see Blake stay up there and establish himself as the forward. You know, he got one, you know, one, one steal doesn't really change anything. Yeah. But a chance to take a lead here. I guess at three three in the third it changes something, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I just I just know that it's easy to get caught up in switching, 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 switching. And you, you what happens is you lose a rhythm for for the match itself, you know. It's nice to establish offensively and defensively, and it's hard to do when you're you're switching back and forth, and that's all I meant by it. Yeah, it, yeah, it did work out in this possession though for sure. Yeah, absolutely, especially when you're playing against a guy like Brandon who's just gonna go hundred miles an hour and show you a million different things. Robertson now puts the ball back into play. Takes what is an eternity for him to shoot. And walks, goes push side, now 4-3. Beautifully executed by Blake there. Yeah. 
Oh, and Brandon responds with a beautiful left hook. Yeah. And he worked it, too. He didn't just go into it. It was it, He sold it. He had that ball creeping nice and slow. It was a great shot. Yeah. And now, again, Blake's got to jump up there and execute on 4-4. Four, four. You yeah. know, it's, it's yeah, harder to do. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, you, pressure's on. You have to have this right. ball. And you're just in the goal. It's like, it's it's hard. You just had a left hook shoved on your... <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but they're going to... I think Blake and Shannon called that second time out, so now they're out. That, that's a, I think it's a good call. Let's just regroup a little bit, not get caught up in that moment. So now both teams out of timeouts, and it is game ball here in game number three. Super pivotal point right here. Absolutely. And that was pretty gutsy, to be honest with you. Comeback point from Brandon. <laughs> to rip to the left hook. He yeah, hammered no. it. That was a beautiful shot. Yeah, I mean, he bluffed the brush a couple times and then ripped it. It was well-timed. He sold it, which was the key. He had that ball creeping so slowly. I was not expecting it either. Beautiful. And he's going to go to work overtime on the five now, and he gets one block. Oh, and that one gets through off yeah. the back wall. Really, really fortunate. That was uh, on Carlos. He should have kept that in his zone. Blake walking, taking his time. Oh, and that was a beautiful little pump fake he threw to the pump uh, push side before he came back down the middle. Yeah. And Coley and Robertson take game number three now. Yeah, Blake got lucky to, to have that possession, though. Yeah, that, he mishandled the pass and uh, able to grab it off the back wall. Yeah, big mistake by Carlos there. That was huge. Yeah. So we got a little time here. We got some uh, good action going for you over on table number two. I believe that's pro doubles. Do you know that? A couple, that, a couple of my hometown boys from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's Rob nice. Balza playing goalie. My 2003 semi-pro doubles. I'm sorry, 2001 semi-pro doubles world champion partner. Very nice. Robert Balza playing goalie and uh, Greg Rushing up front. And on um, the other side of your screen, the two up-and-comers. Well, they, they've, they've arrived. Yeah. It's fair to say that. But uh, Sullivan Rue and Sam Dijon. Yeah, and they're playing great. I think that's still the winner's side. As uh, we're back underway here on table number one, Brandon going to put the ball into play. And Blake able to snag that pass attempt. Goes through the high lane. Surveys tries to go push side, finds the wall. Feels like Blake's in the wall a little more than we're used to seeing him. All. He's been a little off this weekend, to be honest with all you. He's, not, he's definitely not as sharp. And, I, and, you know, like these guys are good buddies, too. I, I've seen him down at the bar taking shots and <laughs> drinking a little bit this weekend. I'm just being honest. No, yeah, I mean, well, they've taken several beer breaks while we're standing here uh, in the booth. So you can't expect to be your sharpest. But, uh, oh, yeah. Shannon, good job keeping that one on as Brennan sent it back his way in a hurry. Able to get the steal. Looked like he was all over that from square one. Tries the push side. Shannon's been steady though. You know he's, uh, you know, good defense, getting a percentage. He's done pretty good. He he, he was a huge factor in our match for sure. Yeah, been, <laughs> Brandon, uh, all over his clear attempts here. He's uh, giving him a run for his money there as Shannon continues. Oh, and he sends one slowly up the table. Perfect time to switch. Yeah. Blake now. And Blake Robertson open scoring. one nothing now. Yeah, Carlos is just chasing. He's not established anything. He's chasing around. He's, he's, and that's a horrible thing to do against Blake because his shot is based off of hitches. He'll shoot at the open hole, and then if he's got you jumping somewhere, he, he has this big hitch one way and then back the other. And if, if you're jumpy, he can really get you in trouble with that. So I'd like to see Carlos establish something and, and force Blake to go somewhere. As Brandon goes push side, and now they're going to go with the defensive switch. And that's a, I think that's a good switch. I like that switch on their side. And yeah, let Carlos get his feet under him a little bit as Blake goes quickly along the wall. Just to mix up the D is good. See, and you see that? How Two he, very quick shots. Yeah, but he was established on that push on that pull side. You know, he just he wasn't chasing around. Very slow and steady defense. And Blake will shoot into you. He'll, he'll test you. Test and see if you hold your ground. So that was, uh, I like that slower defense from Brandon. Yeah, it looked like Brandon was going to leave his feet on that two bar clear attempt, but uh, Coley now able to reel it in. And Brandon again tried two good long pull kicks. This is on that. Carlos now going to go to work on the five. That's a timeout. Nope, and they're going to call timeout. He can't pass with seven pounds of foosball guys hanging from his neck. 
You look at those <laughs> necklaces he's got there. I hadn't <laughs> noticed that. Yeah, no, that's a uh, very nice uh, yeah. <laughs> accessory Carlos has there. It's always fun to see the different Foosmen uh, things that get... Brandon's, <laughs> Brandon's a little more GQ. His are uh, 24 karat gold there. Yes. I saw a wrench shaped like a Foosman <laughs> this weekend as Brandon puts the ball back into play, and he quickly goes along the wall. Chance now to take the lead in a game they have to have to stay alive. And he goes push side and takes the 2-1 lead. Really impressed with Brandon, how, how patient he's been. Yeah, I've seen him you taking know. his time. Obviously a player that likes to go very quickly. Yeah. Carlos, two good blocks and gets the steal. Only one timeout remaining, so he's going to have to pass and does. Well executed by Carlos. This should be a timeout. That's a that's a Brandon's been scoring too well to take a three to one lead, a three one or a two yeah. two. That's huge. I would I would much rather be out of timeouts in that possession than and go up three one. Oh, good shot, but Shannon Coley equal to it. Taking his time now and clears it, but now Brandon has that bank attempt intercepted. Shannon's playing solid back there. He's just clearing the ball. He's not trying to do too much. You know, you got to let Blake go up there. He's so good at picking up loose balls. Tries to go short there, but Brandon, they're waiting for him. Tries to bank, but Blake says no. Bluffing it again and again. Blake blocked almost the exact same shot. Try to send that one down the middle of the table, but blocked up off. So a clear for all intents and purposes. So now back to Coley. And it does look like the, uh, the youngsters on table number two took that first game in that pro doubles match as Coley puts the ball back into play. Miss executes as Carlos is able to reel it in. Don't like that call. I really don't. Brandon needs to be up there. Reestablish control. He, he was passing and scoring really well. He was as now Coley taking a oh beautiful pass. Again, he's not trying to do too much. Yes. And Blake ties it up at two as he gets that good deep push side, and now Brandon will jump back up front. So all that switch and all those good blocks that Brandon made kind of went to waste, in my opinion. Well, uh, as we look at the result of the ball perspective, as that was a beautiful pass by Brandon. Yeah, I know for sure that was. Uh, he made three three good blocks or so. Oh, and comes down the middle and take regains the lead now three two, and the, another defensive switch. Maybe they'll be a little more inclined to call time. He wants to know how many timeouts he has he's got left. One. He's got one. Yeah. So. Blake operating along the wall. See how, see how steady he, I told you Blake will shoot into your guys, and he was just yeah, parked on that exactly pole. That's exactly what side. he did. Expecting Brandon to jump. Carlo, right. Carlos should be taking notes on, on how to just hold his ground a little bit. Coley now, looking to push. Sends that one off the back wall, and Blake with a good grab on his five. Tries the lean, Carlos takes it away. This should be a timeout, big, oh, big mistake. Carlos flubs a little bit on the left hook, but Blake's wall pass off the mark. So Brandon again now, sticking with the banks. Oh, then tries to send that pass up the table, but Blake gets a piece of it. That's oh. a jar all the way. Well, they play rough in Costa Rica, though. Yeah, they didn't seem to mind. <laughs> yeah. As that ball comes to rest, so Robertson will have to put the ball back into play. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he was, had a shot at it. No, it was a perfect, perfectly executed pass. Yeah, it was 100% it was a jar, in my opinion, from here at least. Yeah. But again, wasted opportunities. Carlos had another possession. Brandon's been passing and scoring when he gets the ball. Yeah. There's no reason they shouldn't be up, you know, 4-2 to two right now. Instead, Blake can pass it through and tie it up at three and three, three to three. Yeah, Brandon seems to be concerned about his timeout. You can't take him with you. That's very true. So 
so Blake puts the ball back into play as Carlos will go to work defensively with two hands on that five bar. And Blake just operates nice and smooth through the lane. Taking his time surveying. Oh, and tries to compulse sign. Brandon there waiting for him. And Carlos reels it in. And again, no timeout. Oh, but a beautiful off the wall brush down. I hate that pass. <laughs> Carlos gonna shoot it. And he comes down the middle. Huge break there. Not break, excuse me. Well executed. Uh, roll over there from Carlos. Now 4 2. So it pays off. And now he's doing a pretty good job blocking up. Oh, and Blake goes right back down along the wall. Cut me off there. He tries to go push side. Brandon doing a great job blocking Blake. Oh, and Shannon loses the handle. So Carlos now. So now why you have a timeout and it's 4 2. Car yeah. uh, and he will. Thought I was going to let that one rip. But. And, you know, Shannon got a little aggressive there, but you're down 4 to 2. Blake's not scoring. I don't think it's a bad time to, to take a chance. Yeah, you're, up a, you're up a game. Um, it's not as costly as it could have been. He's been pretty steady back there, but not too bad of a mistake, I guess. Didn't work out, but I, I don't mind him actually going for it on that point. All right. Get some table service here as Brandon puts the ball back into play and quickly rips that one down the middle of the goal. Our uh, colleague here was distracting us a little bit, yeah. but that sends this to a decisive fifth game. And I don't mind that. <laughs> I don't mind it because Blake does that to me all the time. The ready, one, two, three, into a slingshot. Yeah. Me, I think it's so cheap. Yeah. I, hate, I hate the rule, and I think it's really kind of cheap and cheesy. You know, shooting before, I don't know, I never, I never liked the rule. Yeah, because the, the shot kind of starts before you've touched three, right? Right. And so it's kind of a... Uh, I don't know. I find it kind of cheesy, but Blake does it to me all the time, so it's actually good to see it happen <laughs> back to him. A little karma. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I actually love it. Yeah. So. yeah. It's also, I mean, it's kind of a gutsy move because it's kind of, you catch him off guard or you don't, right? Yeah, it's just, it's kind of cheap in my in my opinion. I oh, absolutely. Maybe I'm an old school player. No, yeah. I'm, I'm getting to that point. I but. hear you. But if it doesn't work out, then you kind of look like, you know, <laughs> yeah. looks like a terrible decision, but you can catch him. Yeah, whether it works or not is one thing. I think just just the attempt is. I, just, uh, I, I find it just cheesy yeah. and cheap. Actually, I, w I would have not knowing the rules that well, being relatively new, I wouldn't have guessed that that's legal that you can kind of start your shot before. Yeah, it's got to be three touches. And in the old days when I started playing, not that old, but uh, you know, the, you had to touch two and stop it for a second. Oh, okay. Okay. But now, as long as it touches three, it could be flying between Correct. one, two, three. Exactly. As Robertson gets game number five underway. Going quickly through the lane. And comes down the middle. Brandon left him a pretty wide lane there. Yeah. And when Blake's flowing, that's when he's his best. You can see he shoots on one or two. That's when he's his best. When he takes his time, he, he second guesses himself a little bit. Yeah, Blake so. probably known more than anybody else for kind of going quick on his three bar. Yeah, and I, I liked him opening up just going with his gut. As Brandon now tries to respond, tries to go push side. Shannon there to greet him. Goes right back to it, ties this thing up at one apiece, and immediately we're getting a defensive switch from the team on the left. Oh, and it doesn't work out as that pass attempt is blocked, but kicks around the table and finds a way to the back of the goal. So Robertson and Coley will regain the 2-1 lead. Munoz now puts the ball back into play. It's a good test, good test for Brandon here. This is all good experience for him. He's still young, and he's still fairly inexperienced um, in these situations. He's always been kind of like the king of Costa Rica, and kind of, you know, he's, he's able to have his way with, with everybody down there, a lot of, you know, Central and South American players. This is a, this is a new level for him, and it's a you know, new experience and playing, playing at this higher level. And he's definitely rising to the occasion, but... Um, Win, win or lose, he's, he's gaining valuable experience here. Yeah, as the defensive switch for the team on the right pays off, Robert's able to get a piece of that, but now he's going to have to do it again as Munoz collects that loose ball. Tries to go push side, Blake there. The more you're put in these situations, the more comfortable you become um, and you handle them 
you know, in the future. Is Coley going to shoot now? Nope. He's going to call a timeout. Shan has been playing a long time. He, he understands the situation. He's, he's very steady. A chance to take a 3-1 lead, like you said last game, for the opposing team. But, uh, if you're curious, it's 3-2 over on table two now. I think it's tied up at one game apiece. The game counters are a little off. But, uh, it's definitely one game apiece. But. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's two out of three, right? Pro? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. The, uh, and then the guys on the left, Rob Balls and Greg Rushing, are going down to the... Uh, they're coming to South Florida They're coming for the to the Thunderdome as yep. Robertson puts that ball back into play and strokes it home to the near side. Now a 3-1 lead, so that pays off exactly how they would have hoped. And they're going to stick with the switching, and Shannon's going to get back up front. Yeah, that's going to suck that those guys are going to be down there. <laughs> I believe they're uh, Cream City Crushers. That's their uh, team yeah. name there? The, yeah, the M Milwaukee Boys. Very nice. As Brandon picks that one off. Tries the wall. Shannon there. Goes up. Brandon Munoz. Goes push side. Cuts the lead in half. Now 3-2. And he's been hitting that push side good. You know, he's he's actually proved me wrong. I'll, I'll admit it. He's uh he's hitting it really well. It's gotten better the past few tournaments. Yeah, I think he's still uh Looks, still looks like he's favoring his pull side. Yeah. So I think you're spot on with that. But he is hitting that very, very well. Yeah. Better than I've seen him. And bluff and bank a lot out of the back. And tries it. And Coley with a good defensive effort. Blocks it. Kicks it up off the table. Stun, let me ask you. If you had to come up with a team name, what would your team name be? Um, I would go back to... I mean, I, I've had a couple of team names. And it's actually my ski ball name. My original foosball name... When I was 11, 12, uh, about 12 years old, it was I'm a huge Metallica fan, and it's always been uh, Damage Incorporated. Oh, very nice. And uh, it's actually when I roll ski ball leagues, that's my ski ball name. So you, you participate in ski ball leagues? Uh, yeah, that's I pretty actually cool. Was, I, I didn't know such a thing. I, uh, I guess I should have assumed. I didn't know foosball was this big of a deal. Yeah, it's Robertson was, now. Good effort by Brandon. Big block there. Yeah. So you're pretty good. You competitive in that too? I'm, I was, I believe, top two or three in our league and asked to join our national team uh, for Florida, or Florida's national team, to go to New York City to compete in the uh, the nationals up there. That is super cool. So, but I'm, 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 I won the rookie of the year last year. Nice, as Robertson calls timeout. I won the, yeah, the rookie roller of the year, and I also won the hundo derby, so rolling the, uh, as many hundreds as you can. Oh, that's, that's neat. Man. That was in my first skeezing, as they call it. <laughs> Just pun after pun. Yeah, oh, it's, that's all uh, it's about. And it's called a uh, brewski ball. Brewski ball. So you go oh. there, chug beers. And, I think uh, I've heard I've heard that. Yeah. I don't think I knew that it was a competitive ski ball. Yeah. I play in Gainesville. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Actually, I, I, now I'm thinking, I think, uh, I think we're getting, a, uh, we might be getting a league in Jacksonville. I think I, that's where I heard it from. Over at, uh, Kegging corn? No, uh, so this was a secret at one point, but Chris and uh, Chris is involved. They're opening a new bar next door, oh. and uh, it's going to be more like traditional bar games, less of the um, arcade stuff. As Robertson puts the ball back into play, comes down the middle. It is now four two. That was a great timeout. He recognized that you know again those are the pivotal points right there. You know it could have been three three or four two. You know especially in this fifth game. As Munoz puts the ball back into play. Uh, does this win by two in the yes, losers bracket this absolutely, season? Absolutely, okay. yep. I didn't. Obviously, three out of five. As Brandon needs this ball, Ooh, tries to straight, but able to grab his own rebound. Oh, tries it again. Good defensive effort there from Coley. Shannon's been super solid. You know he hasn't. Yeah. That one blocked on the five. He, he's been solid defensively though. You know, that that stuff happens, but he's been he's been fairly solid. He hasn't made too many mistakes back there, and he's typically a forward, so I think he's done a good job back there. Yeah, as Robertson now the chance match ball tries to come pull side, puts it into the wall. It was there. It was there. But yeah, right decision. But now Brandon Munoz with a chance to clear. Oh, and tries to go into a pull shot, misses, or kept out by Coley. And it's win by two. This is a comeback point here. And Shannon Coley would love to. Oh, and he tries that, but Carlos able to get a man on it. Oh, oh and he wow. loses the ball. And I 
and expect to have a timeout here. And we will. And uh, all that raucous, all that raucous you're hearing our mics pick up. Uh, Sam Dijon and Sullivan Rue have just defeated uh, Rob Balls and Greg Rushing. Rob Balls and Greg Rushing. And we we always lobbied for uh, Rob's teammate team name to be Balls of Deep, but ah. they didn't go with it. They yeah. didn't go. It's with a little it. too on the nose, almost. <laughs> you know, it's a little too obvious. But no, that would be good. So you, with your Cream City Crushers, is that what they? they are yeah, the that's cream the team name. That's pretty good. Yeah. Man, I, I hate to be biased, but that's who I'm, who I'm going to be rooting for. Oh, that's yeah. fair. Your hometown. Yeah. As Munoz puts the ball back into play. Big pressure point for Brandon here. This is. Uh, and he comes he, pole yeah. side. Man, that was Dude, big pressure. Yeah. Yeah. But it, you see, it's just you, you go with what you're comfortable in, in pressure situations. Well, he's been working the push he's, side. Yeah, absolutely. And so then it was there when he needed it, yeah. right? It's just got a lot of snap on it. It's fast. Oh, it's bleak. Blocked a few times, but out of that tic-tac goes back along the wall. Yeah. He's, he's really good at the second chances. He always gets that ball back and goes immediately into something. But look at Brandon just daring him. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's blocking yeah. the straight and then challenging him to go to either corner, and he decides to come pole side and regain the lead. It's now 5-4. Yeah. He, got, he got Brandon jumpy. And through that hitch, got him all the way to the push side. Went back to the pull. I think he uh, regretted missing that pull side the last, the last one. But let's see how Brandon responds. Oh, and he gets hung up on the wall. And as the clock was ticking, Brandon able to advance that. Another big pressure point. A point ball he has to have. And he goes back to the push side. Just well set up. I'm impressed with his three round. He's hitting really good holes, and he's doing it from both sides of the ball. He's faking one way and the, going the other. And Blake, as usual, doesn't waste any time. Tries the straight, and Brandon able to keep it out. He didn't bite. He didn't bite for that first hitch. And Carlos, after gaining possession on the five rod, going to call a timeout and let Brandon get up there and have a chance to take in the lead. Is this their second timeout? Are they out? That was their second. Yeah, they called the one um, right before that on the ball to tie it up. Good match yeah. here as the crowd builds here in the pit. Yeah. Is it pit or pits? Uh, <laughs> I've heard it said both ways. I, <laughs> I guess this is pit table number one, but it, it is in the pits. Pits. Okay. Oh, and Brandon miss execute or just really just lost the handle on that. Didn't go. It ran a little bit flat. I think it could have been a little bit deeper. Coley now. It's deeper. Wow. Oh, and that's going to go to Blake's five, correct? I don't know if it would be considered a spin. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he didn't hit the ball after he let the rod fly, maybe? I would have called that a spin. He definitely uh, hammered it. I mean, he let go of the rod, yeah. and he hit the ball. I would call that a spin, but uh. it was a great save, though, because that yeah. thing was climbing over his five bar and <laughs> yes, going to land on Blake's three. Yeah, and he whacked it into the crowd. Yeah. I don't know. I would I would have called a spin on that one. Yeah. He, he definitely just spun the whole. I'm sure round. he would have taken the spin to keep it off of uh, yeah. Blake's three, but yeah, that's kind of a interesting call there or non-call. Uh, you think Blake would have said something? He's probably the most experienced one on you know in these bigger matches. Yeah. That's Coley's pass attempt, unable to be held on to by Robertson, but Carlos Suspendes Martinez now trying to survey the defense, and he comes down the middle. Blocked, but it trickles through to Brandon's three. Carlos isn't afraid to go for it. He's been playing foosball a long time. And obviously a very good def or offensive goalie. Oh, yeah. Well, the style they play in Costa Rica is lots of tic-tacs, pull kicks, push kicks. I mean, it's, it's just a different style. It could be unorthodox. I, I, would, I could see him coming up with a big shot. Oh, and he goes with the, uh, the hustle shuffle defense yeah. there. Which, which isn't a bad idea. He wasn't, his other D wasn't working out great, so. Yeah. Was, oh, that. Little 52 man brush down there for Blake. Catches Brandon off guard. And Blake, not wasting any time there, goes push side. It is now once again match ball in favor of Robertson and Coley. And Blake being pretty demonstrative on the table. He's pumped up. Munoz puts the ball back into play. Oh, and Blake with the steal. Chance to put this fifth game away. Full side looks there. Oh, he tries to go push, and Carlos beats him. Oh, and 
He's he's scary back there. Comes <laughs> back with that push kick, man. Yeah, lucky to get that one back as Robertson almost had a chance at snagging it on his three. But instead, Coley now reels it in. Let's see Shannon in this big situation. Like I said, he's not a goalie. He's done fairly well, but... Oh, and he does squeak it through to Blake's three. That looked like a shot, but... Oh, oh. and it's blocked and kicks off the far wall. And in five games, Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley have defeated Brandon Munoz and Carlos Cespedes Martinez to advance to the loser's bracket final. Great match, though. That was really good. No, fantastic foosball to watch. Yeah. Well fought by Brandon and Carlos, but just coming up short in the end in overtime in the fifth game. Definitely nothing to hang their heads out there. Yeah. And chalk it up is good experience for, for Brandon. He's uh, he's going to have plenty more of these matches to come you know, yeah. in his future. Absolutely. It was cool to see the way he responded. So. And it uh, looks like we're getting a little bit of discussion here in the pit about that spin. Uh, Shannon seemed to think it was a spin. Looks like, yeah. But all's well, it ends well as uh, Blake and Shannon advance to go on to face uh, Jake Barnett and Mario Oreganello. What an interesting story that is. I know. It was, uh, I couldn't believe it. I didn't even know Mario was here because normally he plays with Kane. Yeah. And Kane and Tommy were hooked up and I saw Mario playing with Jake Barnett and Jake Barnett's an interesting story even away from foosball. Yeah, he, I didn't know he had a TED Talk and all that. I saw yeah, that today. Really interesting character, and he's taken to foosball. I don't know how long he's been playing. Not too long. He was winning amateur. He won amateur doubles. Amateur at Worlds. He amateur did be, singles. I think he won amateur doubles as well. Um, uh, he's won a couple titles here in rookie yeah. and amateur. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no. Uh, so Mario decided to come late. He was supposed to play with Jason Lurie. And Jason bailed on him last minute, so Mario just called Jake, and, uh, and then they go on to the, you know, sit in third or better. Currently, yeah. so that's and, a cool and, story. And Jake's held his own. Yeah, he's played really well, and he's a little bit unorthodox. And he's—you'll see him doing jumping jacks in the in the <laughs> pits see there, that, yeah. in, in between timeouts. And I don't know if people know it, you know. And, and he's kind of the uh, the dark horse. I don't think anyone really knows what he's going to do. You that's know? a good point. Yeah. That, so and Mario's Mario's season season yeah. amazing player. He's been playing for so long. He's steady. Um, Good defense, good off, good defense. Five, great offense, and uh, you know he was one of the top players in the world for a long time. And he took a little bit of time off, but he, I watched him play yesterday. He played great. I, I did miss the winners bracket final, but um, it's I don't know. I think it's interesting. I, I I like Jake's enthusiasm. He's he's hungry. Yeah, loves and the game clearly. Yeah, and, uh, it's uh, I'm to be honest, I'm I'm kind of rooting for him. I I like to see some <laughs> some new blood. That's yeah, it's always nice to see the uh, upset, the dark horse come in there, and uh, as long as it's not against me. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony, uh, thank you for joining me. We're gonna get a little break here while we wait to get a match call, but uh, somebody, <laughs> whether it's from on site or from home, will be uh, back with you to cover more of the remaining action here at the 2022 Kentucky State Tour Kickoff Foosball Championships. Thanks, folks.
best lane pass is going to be. Yeah, that's That's a lane pass right now. I've been talking about how we slide it. It's just a field thing when we always do it like that.
brackets. Designated mix is two out of three, straight up. Expert mix, two out of three, straight up. It's been fun, dude. I'm <laughs> 
Back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Kentucky State Tour Kickoff Foosball Championships. We rejoin uh, open doubles action here. This is the loser's bracket final on the left of your screen. That's Mario Reganello and Jake Barnett out of Canada. On the right, that's Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley out of Mississippi. And I am joined once again by my good friend and colleague, Brad Lorraine. Brad, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you. I'm surely uh, I'm looking forward to this match. This is going to be a big one. It looks like Mario's going to start with the roll, or, excuse me, bull shot to open things and Tries to go long, but Shannon beats him out there. Shannon's pass attempt misses the mark, but Blake able to grab the ball. I got it, Brad. I, I got it. Yep. I'm, I... All right. As Coley and Robertson open scoring, but. Mario now with a chance to respond. Oh. Kicks one around and finds the back of the goal. Now 1-1. One, a one. little bit of a change up there for Mario. Garish, it's uh, kind of a surprising. Yeah, he's, maybe he's thought a he, little loose. And good defensive effort. Two times in a row. Is uh, three times. Doing a very good job on one of the best five bars around. As Jake Barnett will reel in the rebound. And uh, Jake... Making it this far in open doubles. Uh, one of the stories that we can definitely a headline. Mario's partner uh, unfortunately bailed on him Friday afternoon. So he called Jake and said, hey, you want to play together? And then they made it all the way to the king seat match. There was a call on the table there. It looked like a illegal um, advancement possible. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I didn't catch that. Uh, this Blake just turned off his phone, so something did didn't yeah. transpire there. I. Uh, that's Rick Macias officiating this game as Blake Robertson has a chance to regain the lead. And he goes push side. And that was a beautiful shot. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. As he caught Jake drifting back towards the middle. So Mario puts the ball back into play. And he tic tacs and goes back down along the wall. But yeah, I don't think uh, if you told, said that Mario had picked up the, as he strokes that one long, tied up a 2-2. Mario picked up the uh, guy that was playing rookie and amateur about a year ago and uh, playing open doubles that he would be this deep. I think people would say you're crazy, but they are playing very well together. Very well, actually. It's uh, surprising. And to see the excitement on Jake's face in the earlier match that we had, it was just, uh, just absolutely beautiful. It's, it's, it's wonderful to have a, a guy that is succeeding maybe a little above his pay grade, but as you said earlier, gosh, it's just it's wonderful to have him up here. Yeah, as Tony and I were talking about in that last match, we watched uh, where we saw Blake and Shannon defeat uh, Brandon Munoz and Carlos Espinosa Martinez. As timeout. The Mississippi guys will call a timeout. Uh, we're talking about Jake is in. He's a he's an interesting character. He's got a lot of history. He's a smart guy. He's a, picked up the game very quickly. He's obviously fallen in love with it. It's good to see him doing this well here. And what do you think of that T-shirt he's got on? He does have. Uh, a, I don't necessarily understand it. It's I a didn't understand it. It's either. a freeze ball <laughs> rod with uh, three men on the rod, but one, one like fell, fell over. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sure there's a meaning behind it. There but must be. We'll yeah. have to ask him later. Yeah. As uh, Coley puts the ball back into play and Ooh. sends it up the table and finds the back of the goal. They regain the lead now 3 2. We saw a lot of this defensive switching in the last match between Shannon and Blake. And it pays off there as Blake able to reel him in. Well, Shannon is more of a forward, as I would uh, put it personally. And I think Blake can play both positions possibly slightly better on the goalie side of it. 
Well, Blake, ones. Yeah, I was say Blake obviously one of the best forwards in the world. Yes. Uh, but yeah, Shannon also a very good forward, but he did a good job defensively. He's going to reel that one in on the five and let Blake get back up there. Called another time out. Yeah, that's their oh, second. That's, one. Was that the second or first? I'm just, I, no, I believe they called it, it is. a moment I think ago. It is. Yeah. It did. Yeah, it is the second. Well, what do we got going for the rest of the night? Well, uh, we're winding down our open doubles action here. Obviously, the winner of this will go on to the final to face Kane Gabriel mm -hmm. and Tommy Atkinson. Pro doubles are still uh, available. Pro doubles up. still yeah. going. Seeing the uh, young phenom Sullivan Rue and Sammy Dijon knocking off the team out of Wisconsin. Uh, Tony said their names five times for me, and I cannot. Uh, Greg Rushing and Robert Balza as Blake comes pull side to make it 4 2. Yeah, that was a split, actually. That was a beautiful shot. The selections that Blake can make is is just way, way up there in talent. Yeah, like we said, one of the best forwards in the world, and you see it by right there. Beautiful tic-tac back to the wall. Sits, pump fakes, and comes back pulling and just like that. Yeah, Jake looks at it as like, what the Yeah, heck? where did that go? It actually uh, it came in behind And Mario it. gives him a little... Gives him a little spank, and everybody in the everybody on the table is having fun as uh, Jay goes start going to their uh, jumping jacks. He's still looking. He's still looking. Yeah. He's like, what the heck? What the heck? Like, how did that get around me? Yeah. It, it, well, because it didn't go around you. But uh, good to see everybody having fun here on a Sunday night in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I believe women's doubles. Yes, uh, women that doubles final still needs to get played. I think that's Hannah Smith and Sullivan Rue against Maggie Strong, and that would be a good one. That's a good, I'm strong matchup between the two. I'm actually not looking at my phone at the moment. I just saw that earlier. Glad you pulled it up as it was. I, I, yeah. I, I can yeah, pull job. it up. Yeah. Keith Glenn with another. I'm resourceful. Oh, it's Maggie and Dusty. Yes. Dusty yes. Bominek. The, uh, well, She's a fantastic goalie. Oh, unbelievable. Yep, yep. We saw her in open strong. mixed. Yes. Throwing up a wall against some of the best shooters in the world. And uh, that's not if you. I know you can see these competitors. Uh, that's a friendly kidding conversation going on. Shannon Coley is suggesting that the glare coming off of Mario's chain necklace uh, is a distraction. So we are having fun here, but it did look like he might have been seriously petitioning the uh, referee. He's a good straight man. That's what it is. He just has that straight look. Yeah, he sold it for a while before finally cracking a smile there. Yeah, as we're. All having fun here as this event winds down. Oh, and Shannon mis-executes, but uh, Mario unable to grab it on his three and then misses the pass. That's a good shot. shot. And uh, yep. Blake almost grabs a rebound, but Mario is the one who comes up with it on his five bar. And you notice for the beginners and or rookie kind of players, you want to nuzzle up against that ball and make positive you have a little bit of contact and then take off. Anytime you have a little bit of a gap in there, it bounces a ball off of your man and, and, and it, it just isn't as accurate and, and, and it literally can, can take an, an angle off of that that you're not anticipating. Yeah, obviously the ball gets out moving a little faster than your man and uh, mm -hmm. throws off your timing for sure yep. as yep. Jake taking his time surveying here against Blake. And stubs it. A little may bit. May or may not. Do you think he was trying to shoot that? Or did no, he I, think it on he, purpose I think he and just stopped it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, time he, he whiffed it and said, okay, I'm going to stop it and let's go ahead and call a timeout. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jake, I like actually looking at downfield. He's thinking about what he needs to do and wants to do. And that's a good actual uh, pro to higher level type uh, play. Ready? <laughs> Let's play, guys. All right, yeah, uh, I, yeah, we got the feed right here. Uh, I turned my mic back on. I apologize, folks at home. We um, had somebody enter the booth to uh, let us know that you guys might have a uh, little obstructed view. Uh, but we will work to fix that if that is indeed a problem. But uh, in the meantime, Mario now, the chance to open scoring. Game number two tries to go long, and Coley greets him out there. Thank you for the comments on possibly Rick was getting in uh, the way of the camera. So thank you guys. Yeah, I think he might be in one of the ways of the uh, like the player view. Oh, that's 
probably it. But uh, I think our, our table feed is fine, so you can see all the action. It looks pretty good from here. As Blake loses the handle and tries to go into a quick push kick. That was an odd-looking shot. It will reset warning. Called Rick. All right. I just get... Sam DeJean's up in the booth with us. I just gave him a little look, see if he wanted to get in the booth, but it doesn't look like he wants to. As uh, Give him some of the <laughs> youth I'll, I'll in there. I'll definitely embarrass you. No, as uh, Mario oh, goes with tic -tac. the... Yeah, and, uh, and the not, rollover tic-tac. Yeah, not the result he wanted as it comes back to rest under Blake's three bar, and he quickly goes pole side. That opens scoring here. Now one nothing. That was a long first ball there in this game number two. And Mario... Pounds that lane pass with authority. And sticking with the Tic Tacs here. I, I, mean, yeah. I haven't seen a ton of Mario's game, but I've never seen him do that before. And, uh, he is capable of that. Now, that's kind of the, the Canadian French Bonzini kind of feel. He, he's definitely a multi table guy. And he is good at that kind of transition kind of game into things that will be a little bit off of what that goalie might be expecting. Makes me wonder if maybe he's lost a little confidence in his pull shot, but obviously a seasoned veteran player. He's going to go to the roller. And now here we yeah. go, see him yeah. we'll setting see up the roller. Well, the surveys goes push side Beautiful and ties this job. up at one apiece, so it looks like that might be the uh, formula for now for Mario. Might want to stick with that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was uh, pretty decisive solid. there. Pretty no, nothing uh, left to wonder about. Let's we'll see what Jake does out of the back. Oh, oh, and Jake gets it the spray in. from the back, right and Barnett's the on goal. the board. Yes. Now 2-1 in favor of the Canadians on the left of your screen. That was oh, a nice little scoop right there. It that was. was Mario looks like he's a little upset that he didn't get a piece of that. And Jake, not fooled. This plate tries to come down the middle, but he's able to grab his own rebound. And again, he loses the handle. Yes. Oh, and Wonks and comes down the middle. That's a hard shot to block. I, yeah, I don't know that what you do with that, but a timeout call, and it's now 2-2. It's that four hole. You know, you, you got the long covered, you got the middle covered, and he takes it out long, you freeze, and he comes right down that four hole. It is a tough, as, as a goalie as I am, it's, it's something that you have to... You have to adjust because you know he might do it. But most of the cases, when a guy goes out far along one side or the other side, he doesn't and can't go all the way back to the real middle, you know, the three hole. He could only bring it down like a ball's width and goes down the middle of the four, between the three and the five and the two, or excuse me, down the, the one and three to the two hole. Did I uh, catch you bragging on yourself a little bit in the middle of that? I would <laughs> never do that. <laughs> As Mario again pounds that lane pass, and he will go back to the rollover. Walking, surveying. We didn't mention it, but yes. there was a defensive switch there, and uh, it paid off as Blake Robertson able to block that ball up off the table. So and young players in. again, did you notice what Blake did right there? He was uh, very active in, in just not knowing where that ball's going to come down, so he's got those both men rolling back and forth to make sure that it bounces off the table if it does come down. Oh, oh and Blake Robertson there. shows off his two bar, pulls that yeah, sweet. Shot right down the middle, well no, executed. Actually, it was over to the far hole. It was an Did outstanding it? It was shot. Yeah, it went over. Yeah, I got the uh, camera right in the way of my view, so but a little hard to tell what hole they're hitting. As Mario now looking to respond, tries to come down the middle and play again with the block. Oh, Ooh, another well just struck ball. Off. Yes, that was a long pull. Oh, and Jake, who loves that passing series does. out of the back. Oh, pink out of the back with Blake as well. Um, he does like that pass, and I think it's a dangerous yeah. pass, to be honest with you. Shannon Bluff shot, but I'm going to guess that he's going to call a timeout, and he will. I would think so, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a young player, again, you know, you, a, lot of, a lot of times you want to hit the ball with your left hand, and it gives the forward a little bit more time to actually see where you're going with that, because the three rod is 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 a little bit further back. Yeah, really rod doubles is so the distance. Close. Yeah, it does. It does doubles the business. The five, uh, the, the five rope is the dangerous part with the three rope because that's where you can see the angle. The guy with that, uh, the forward skills can see the angle. Can also see where you're going to go with that with that back man. <laughs> Oops, I, I might I, I might post that on a inside. No, that was um, 
somebody took some time to get on Microsoft Paint, and uh, as Blake Robertson puts the ball back into play here, and tries to come pull side, and Mario, back. after switching, able to keep him out. Good switch. Oh, and oh, Blake he got getting lucky. flashy no, he, with it. Yeah, but he, he spanked the side of the table there, saying that, yeah, no, I didn't mean to go to that hole. He meant to go long, and he cut it back. Either way, now 4-2. It's four still in two. there, yeah, it's 4-2. Now this is three out of five. It is. We're that deep in uh, the loser's bracket. Well, obviously this is the loser's bracket final. As uh, let's have play, but I got a piece of that one, but it trickles through. Is he baiting him? And he goes push side and yep. cuts the lead in half. Now 4-3. They will need a stop if they want it. Oh, and Ooh, right on nice cue, steal. beautiful steal yeah, by yes. Mario Ragnello. Who now has a chance to tie this game up. And he does. Oh, this is side. Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful Goalie response by Ragnello yes. there. Beautiful. Now, game ball. And Blake doing what he does best, tic tac back down to that far, or the wall. Reading, surveying, Jake. We heard Tony break down how to block Blake, and Jake was trying to do just that. But far. Blake does what he does anyway and goes push side, gets deep. It is now two games to nothing in favor of Robertson and Coley. Yeah, it looked like his two bar went out of the um, the goaling position period. He just went way over too far. I, I don't I don't have to see it again, but what do you got there on your yeah, phone? Uh, so this is uh, when Jake was, we were commenting on the fact that he was uh, continually staring down that hole that he couldn't figure out that he left open. Uh, there, that, oh, there he is. He's that, way out of the position. To that is, uh, we got a, yeah. we got a still shot breakdown from our statistician, uh, letting us know that uh, it was a little wider than maybe Jake thought. But um, yeah, I think they, that that statistician might want to look at that last push shot because that guy might have been clear over outside of the goal as well. Yeah. But anyway, it's great to see Jake in this thing and, and having a good time. Yeah, I mean, however this yeah. match works out, yeah. nothing but pride should be felt on the left side of the table here by yeah. Mario and no Jake. Kidding. Yeah. Uh, now, Mario they, normally has played with Kane for over the years, many, yeah. many years. His last-minute decision to come, Kane was already partnered up with Tommy. He's, those two are currently sitting king seat here, awaiting the winner of this match. Um, so... Uh, looks like, despite the fact there's 25 seconds left on the uh, timeout there, we're just going to jump, or excuse me, uh, in between games. Uh, we're going to jump right back into it. Mario, don't know if he meant to go off the back wall, but he mishandled it. Construction. <laughs> it's just like, is it that late in the evening already? They're already breaking <laughs> yeah, down they're tables. Breaking tables yeah, Power down, equipment yeah, going on yeah. behind us as Barnett able to keep that shot out. That's a nice stick. Yeah, I mean, yeah, why don't you do with that? Blake bluffing pull side. And then goes oh, push. He's just standing there. Come it looks like he's uh, he's Jake, got a he's, beat on Jake, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jake is like deer in headlights right now. And, uh, Mario. We saw him pound those lanes earlier as he tries to again there, but that one before that looked a little haphazard. Maybe uh, I mean, the fat lady's not singing yet, but... Is that actually an appropriate statement anymore? I don't. I, I said it, and then I realized, like, I don't know. But yeah. uh, you know, and then I, th I, I hope everybody knows the guy has to come up I, and say it again. Yeah, call, I was you know, just gonna, I was we were just going <laughs> to let it roll as uh, that shot blocked up off the table. So Coley now put the ball back into play with a one nothing lead here in game number three. <clears throat> I hope everyone knows what I mean. Uh, that yeah, the, it's just uh, the, same. the writing's on the wall, but that's what I should have said. Yeah, me and my my euphemisms. But uh, no, uh, it does feel like a tall mountain to climb as Blake able to handle that loop block pass and then buries that one now 2 nothing. But he didn't uh, mean that. He meant, he meant to go long with that. And, and Jake was in the long hole, but he, he cut it back up in between and uh, made the shot anyway. Yeah, as Mario puts that one off the back wall. Now the chance to get on the board here. Tries the middle, but Shannon Coley there to grade him. And that was a good block. And, is, uh, and again, that stick. pounding, authoritative lane yeah. pass. And nice. just goes middle nice. again, yeah. and Coley can't believe he gave it to him, but he did, and now it's 2-1, yeah, and we're going to get a defensive yeah. switch. Barnett's going to get up front. Barnett actually could play forward. He is actually a decent forward. Yeah, very good forward. He did win uh, handicap doubles this weekend, so he's... I think he fared extremely well in the uh, uh, expert doubles. 
I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure who. I, he I don't know with. what it came up with, uh, but I think he fared pretty. Or it was a singles. It might have been singles. Oh, and then he, night. Yeah, he froze him and, and yep. came back. Well, the other young phenom, Jacob Balcos, took the king seat in uh, expert singles. Mm. Good to see all these young guys. Out it's. I mean, that's. You know, it's, it's been the story over and over again that we've seen recently at these tournaments, but it continues yes. absolutely here. Jacob Balcos, Michael De La Plaz, Sam Dijon, Sullivan Rue. Just these young players continuing to dominate. They're way more seasoned. Is that because their parents were pretty much involved with their I just like careers. to think that they have the swagger of young people, like life hasn't beat them down enough yet, so they don't know any better. They, they, <laughs> they just <laughs> operate with confidence. <laughs> sure, sure, but, sure. But, uh, yeah, they, they, that's they my have observation the video on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. right? yeah, They yeah. just, uh, they just, they still have that young swagger. They think they can conquer the world, and uh, some of them are here in these foosball tournaments. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been a, it's, it's been a, a kind of a light turnout, or in in the past in comparison, but it's been a good one. Uh, good about a hundred more players than they had last year. Granted, that was coming right out of COVID. As Blake is just clearly feeling it now. Four one. I apologize. Not last year was yes. You're right. Yeah, but. Uh, 272 players this weekend. That's actually so not a bad turnout. Not a bad turnout at all. In fact, that's stronger than what I I, I had thought it was. As Mario Two Tax comes back down through the lane and comes uh, middle. And of all they had to have to stay alive. It's now 4-2. It's going to be what Jake's got. Yeah, this is going to be a, a challenge for Jake and Mario, but Cover they are the not out of this yet. Cover the wall. Up oh, and yeah. wow, Brad, you should play foosball. <laughs> As Blake now with a chance to put it away, this is match ball for Robertson and Coley. He tries to come pole side, but Mario able to keep him out. Mario raced him to that uh, pole side. That was an outstanding job there, Mario. And uh, Blake. Again, there goes that wall. Yeah. Blake's got it. He, Blake's clearly feeling it. Mario yeah. kept him out there, but if he's shooting that quick, that means Blake's. Just, oh, and Barnett go. grabs that ball. With shoot it, Barnett. Come on, shoot is. it. You can shoot it. Is he, uh, oh, uh, I, said, I don't know if I've ever dude. seen Jay shoot a pull shot. He bluffed no, that it. Is not his, his, but he's, he's going to call timeout, and he's going to let Mario yeah. handle business here. So, are they going to be able to come back? They need three more balls here before they give up one. If they can do that, I think they're right back in it. Ten seconds, guys. One apiece. I'll kick you out of the booth for one ball, Brad. Don't don't don't, <laughs> don't, don't tempt don't, me. <laughs> Tony's over my shoulder yeah. here and eyeballing me. Uh. Get the hell out of my seat, Brad. Okay, here we go. And Can he make Mario Reganello puts it back into play and blocked up Good and block. catches the table number marker above the light. As Robertson will put the ball back into play. I almost have the feeling that Robert we saw Blake had a pretty it. good pull shot of the back yeah. earlier. But there's uh, some obstruction on the tail. Debris. Debris. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. So he will put the ball back into play now again. Robertson surveys. Oh, and goes long. And in three games, Blake Robertson, Shannon Coley defeat Mario Reganello and Jake Barnett. Impressive performance yep. from, from the, the gentleman out of Mississippi, and especially with the two big shots for Blake out of the back. And uh, clock strikes midnight on Mario and Jake, but they have accomplished uh, quite the feat this weekend playing together, and definitely nothing to so our setup hang their heads the, about. Uh, no, nothing. I mean, a fantastic finish. Absolutely fantastic finish. So, Keith, who is going to be in the finals for the Open Doubles? So that, will, uh, that means Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley will advance to face... King Gabriel and Tommy Atkinson promises to be a good one. Outstanding. Well, let's hope uh, everybody stays with us and watches. Uh, Tony uh, Spreadman is sitting up here and waiting to take over my seat. So let's have a conversation here in a few minutes. Thank you. And be sure at 9 sure. o'clock, if you're not going to be watching us, uh, Foos Talk Live with uh, Tom Robinson. Good call. I will uh, be making a brief appearance on there, so I may not be in the booth, but uh, be sure to join us. We've got a lot of good things coming, still coming to you uh, Sunday night here at the Kentucky Championships. Kentucky Tour Kickoff Foosball Championships. I've had to look over and read the flyer that every time I mouthful. said it is. It that is. is a mouthful, no but, matter what. Uh, yeah, stay tuned, folks, and we'll be, uh, we'll be right back with you. See you soon.
Some of the plays, the winner of another match, or second, and then we ran into the loser, right? 